Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and this lesson, I just want to give you a broad, high-level overview of Hugo Static Site Generator. Static website generators allow you to have a compromise between just writing out a bunch of static HTML pages and using a heavy and potentially expensive content management system. If you're somebody who wants to start a blog or maybe you wanna just have a small website to yourself or even if you wanna have a big website to yourself but you don't wanna use a content management system like let's say WordPress or Wix or Squarespace, then a static site generator and specifically Hugo might be for you. Hugo is one of many static site generators out there but what's cool Cool about it is it's extremely fast and that's kind of been Hugo's sort of main rallying point as far as marketing their framework is that it's extremely fast and let me tell you it is a lot of these static website generators that are out there are written in sort of older languages that aren't necessarily optimized for speed Hugo's written in the go programming language which uses multi-threading and it basically it can do a bunch of stuff at the same time and so it's really useful for doing what Hugo does which is generate static web pages there's two basic types of websites. There are dynamic websites and then there's static websites. And dynamic websites are websites like, for example, Facebook. So if I go on Facebook and you go on Facebook, our two, the two Facebook pages that we get back are gonna look different. Now the headers and the footers and all the, the basic layout of the page is gonna look the same. The look and feel of the page is gonna look the same, but the content that's on the page is gonna be different. And if I go and I refresh my Facebook page, the content that's on there, again, is gonna be different, right? Facebook pages are dynamically generated. So when I go to Facebook and I go to facebook.com, I go to the Facebook web servers and they say, okay, who are you? And they say, okay, you're this user. I'm gonna generate an entire website for you with your own information, your own posts from all your own friends. So every time I go on Facebook, I get basically different content that, that shows up. That's a dynamic website. A static website is a website where what you see is what you get. So there's just a collection of static web pages that don't change. Uh, they're not dynamically changing or anything. They're just sort of hard coded. And when I go to a static website, the web server just says, okay, this is the page you want, here you go. And everybody's getting the same page. Uh, it's not, the page in the page content isn't gonna change depending on who you are or where you are or what you're doing. So these are essentially, at a high level, the two types of websites that there are. And dynamic websites are notoriously convenient because, um, you know, you can put a bunch of logic inside of them. They're easy to maintain. They're really easy to scale. So there's a lot of benefits of using a dynamic website, but they're also slow in the sense that every time the user goes onto your web server, you have to generate a new web page for them. Also, they're expensive because you have to host these server somewhere and that costs money, that costs computing resources. Static websites are notoriously a little bit harder to maintain just because you don't have all the flexibility of using a dynamic site. And usually you can't use, for example, like conditional logic. Um, you can't use like functions or variables inside of them. Usually it's just like, you have to hard code your website. There's a lot of copying and pasting and stuff like that. But static websites are extremely fast. If you're using an HTTP server, HTTP is really good at just handing out web pages. And so when someone goes to your website, all your web server has to do is just give them a page. It doesn't have to generate any information. It doesn't have to go to a database. It doesn't have to do anything. It just has to give them that page and then boom, you're done. And that's really fast. So there's these two types of websites and there's pros and cons to using both of them. Hugo is great for someone who wants to have like a blog or maybe just a, a website of their own, but doesn't necessarily want to deal with a content management system like WordPress or Wix or whatever. And Hugo is great because if you want, you don't have to write a single line of HTML code. You can go in, you can write all your content using Markdown, and you can use one of the dozens of Hugo themes that have been created by the community, and you don't have to write a lick of HTML. You just write your content pages and then they show up nice and formatted and organized and and you're done. There's no content management system to deal with. There's no uh, settings to configure and, and, and there's no database to set up and all that stuff. But if you're somebody who wants to get your hands dirty with HTML and you want to go in there and you want to control every single little uh, element and aspect of the site, you can do that. You can write your own Hugo layouts and templates and you can get really deep and you can literally control every single line of code that goes on your website. And so Hugo's really flexible in that sense where if you don't want to use HTML, you just want to you know, write your blog or whatever you want to do, you can do that and it's super easy and it's super convenient. If, but if you want to control everything about the website, you can do that too. Hugo is 100% free, it's open source, the community is awesome and honestly there's a lot of uh, Stack Overflow and Hugo forums 
questions and answers out there that you can use. And this Draft Academy course is going to go through everything that you need to know to get started with Hugo. So if you follow along with this course, you're going to know exactly what you need to do to build your website. We're going to start off with the basics. We're just going to look at things like creating content. We're going to talk about using a theme. And so if you just want to get your website up and running, you don't want to worry about having to program anything or write any HTML. And the first part of the course is going to cover everything that you need to know. In the latter part of the course, we're going to get our hands dirty and we're going to go and we're going to be looking at how you can control all of the HTML on your page. We're going to look at creating templates and layouts and all that fun stuff. We're going to use conditional logic functions. We're going to get really deep into the specifics of using Hugo. So this course has something for everyone. And I hope you stick around and follow along and learn about this awesome framework, Hugo. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.